If you are a beginner and want to get a solid understanding um, in all the chores, so watch this video. Hi friends, welcome to my channel. When I was learning pre-order traversal, in order traversal, and post-order traversal, it's very hard to understand them intuitively. I mean, I understood the code, but then just forgot in the next a few hours. Um, it's because the logic is too complicated for the human brain to visualize. So I made this animation and explained everything that confused me before. In this video, I'm going to visualize binary tree in order traversal and walk you through the code line by line. I'm trying to use simple language that I can think of to explain so that everyone can understand. This is a tree that we are going to traverse. There are six nodes A, B, C, D, E, F. Since it's in order traversal, the output order should be from left to top to right. I'll leave this visualization here for you to refer to if needed. What output do we expect to see? Here you can pause to come up with the expected output. It should be D, B, F, E, A, C. This is only for us to verify the correctness of the algorithm. The computer doesn't know about it. This is one of the solutions. There are many different algorithms out there, but I kind of like how simple and readable it is. Let's use this code to traverse the tree. This line asks us to create a stack. It's like our memory. We usually um, remember events that happened yesterday more clearly than happened one month ago. So it's easier for us to retrieve new memory than old memory. There are many ways to create a stack, but this way is recommended by Javadoc. You may also see people create a stack by using different combinations of interface and class. Um, don't be anxious if you never see it, trust me. They will influence your understanding of this problem. Just remember that they are all last in first out at this time. Okay, let's go to the next line. It's asking us to create an array list called output. You may also see people create it with other classes. Um, don't worry about it. This is where we store the result. We'll return this list in the end as a deliverable. On this line, I create a node pointer called cur means current. This is very important. It will help us to go somewhere, somehow, grab a node so that we can do something on this node. Then there's an assignment. It assigns the root to the node. So if you look at the tree, the current node is in the root now. Here's the main course. It's a big while loop with a small while loop. Um, what is the condition to go inside? If the current node is not now, or if the stack is full, we are good to go. And here it's or, not end. So only need to meet one requirement. If at some point we don't meet both of them, that means we have had all input ready to return, which is the last step. Here is the small while loop. What is a goal? I'll explain it later after we run some iteration and you will see it. Right now, we need to check the condition. The current node is not now, so we are good to go. It asks us to push A to the stack. Push is a method of stack. Basically, whatever that's inside of the parentheses uh, will be added into the stack. We are moving the pointer to A's left child. What is the left child of the current node A? It's B. So we move the pointer to B. Now we reach the end of the while loop. So just loop back and check the condition. Not now, so go inside. It asks us to push the current node to the stack. Since we just moved the pointer from A to its left child, we'll add B to the stack. We are moving the pointer to B's left child. What is the left child of B? It's D. So we move the pointer to D. All right, loop back and check. Okay, P is coming. We add D to the stack. We're moving the pointer to this left child. Are we? Yes, it's invisible. It's a leaf, so both left child and right child are now, but we are able to move the pointer to now. We are able to move. Loop back and check the condition. Uh-oh, it's now. 
the door is closed. So we can now get into this. Mm -mm. Okay, let's just have a recap. What was this while loop doing? Yes, it's trying to reach the left child of the left child of the root. If you take a look at this branch in yellow, it's a root of the current pointer and it's visiting from A to B to D and then save them to the stack with the same order, A, B, D. In this way, we can retrieve the last node so that we will always be able to deal with the left node before its parent. It's very diligent in finding the left node, so we call this while loop, find the leftmost loop, or liberal loop. Okay, let's look at this line. Pop is a function to retrieve the last node and delete in the stack. Remember the last in first out principle? We pop the last node and assign to curve. Do we assign a node or just a value? It's node. Always keep in mind that the node and value are two things. Now if you take a look at the tree, the current node is D again. On this line, we add the value of the node into the output. We've generated the first element in the output. Let's have a recap again. What we've been doing so far. We keep visiting the left node until reaching the leaf and save the whole left branch into the stack. Then the value of the left mode leaf is the first output. On this line, we move the current node to its right child. What is the right child? It's now. The pointer can still move there, even though it's invisible. We reach the end of the while loop, so we go back to the condition to check. Current node is now indeed, but the stack is now empty. We still have something in the working memory stack waiting to be added. We can't just leave them there. So we go inside of the loop. Uh-oh, we don't satisfy the condition. The current node is now. Mm, so we just go to the next section. Pop the last element from the stack. On the tree side, the pointer is moving up to B, the parent. We add the value of B to output. OK, let's have a recap again. What did this algorithm do? Hmm, this is very important. When the left node is a leaf, we output it and its parent. This is what the algorithm was doing so far. On this line, we assign the pointer's right child to the pointer. On the tree side, the current node is moving from B to E. We reached the bottom and bounced back to the beginning. OK, good to go. Since the current node is now now, we're good to go. We push the current node E into the working memory stack. Then we move the pointer to its left child, F. Are you familiar with this? Yes. It's trying to reach the left branch of E, just similar with the branch of A, B, D. The algorithm is whenever you find a new node, find its leftmost grand, 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 grand child. In this way, we can always prioritize the left child before its parent. So smart. Okay, let's look back and check the condition. Good. Push F into the stack. What's the left child of the current node? It's now. Don't ignore it. We check the condition. Current is now, so the door is closed again. Then we skip this and run to the next section. Pop the last element in stack and assign it to current node. Add the value of F to input and move the pointer to its right child, which is now. Are you familiar with this? Yes, it's the same as what we did on node D. Now we can even predict what's going to happen next based on previous experience. Whenever we reach a left child leaf, we'll go back to its parent and add the value of the parent to output. Let's see if our prediction is right. Ooh, we don't have to run this anymore since we've reached the leftmost leaf. So we just pop the last element E and E is a current node now. The pointer moves up to E. Then we add the value of E to the output. Our prediction is correct. 
We always deal with a parent before dealing with his right child. What is a right child? It's now. We go back and check. We're on this line now. So we pop A from the stack. A is the first element that we saved, but this popped up very, very late because of the first in, last out principle. We add value of A to the output. Let's just double check if it's satisfied in all the truth. Is everything in the left subtree of A, R before A, D, B, F, E? Yes. Is everything on the right of A not in the output? Yes, C is not visited yet, so great. Now we move the pointer to A's right child C. This time the stack is empty, but the current node is now now. Mm, we are still good. Push the current node to the stack. What is the left child of C? It's now, so we can jump out of this liberal loop. Now we can pop the last element from the stack and call it current node. So the current node moves back to the leaf. Add the value of C to the output. We almost finished everything at this time except check the right child. The current node is now and we go back to check the condition. Well, current node is now and the stack is empty. Hmm, that means we have traversed all the tree. Now the door is closed. Therefore, let's just run to the last line and return the output. Yay, we finished everything. I hope, I hope it helps you to understand the procedure. Okay, why well, it's hard to understand? For every node, it will be in one of four status. It can be a node that hasn't been visited yet or being pointed by the current pointer or it can be waiting in the stack or it can be in the output. So it's now simple for the human brain to track four status at a time. So we'll need some animation to help us to understand it. After you think about it for a few times, you will be familiar with it, no problem. Another thing I'm not sure if you noticed is that the left child used to be a parent node. So I was pretty confused about it until I realized the relationship between those nodes are just relative. It's not absolute. For example, B used to be A's left child, but when it's being the current node, it becomes a parent. It's like Matryoshka Kadal. If you think about it, when you open the outer DAO, you will see an inner DAO. Now the inner DAO is the outer DAO. And you keep doing it. When the stack will be empty, there are two times that the stack is empty. The first time is when the root is popped out since the root A is the first one pushed into the stack, so it's the last one to come out. Therefore, when we clear node A, the stack will be empty temporarily. Therefore, when the stack is empty, it doesn't necessarily mean we traverse every node. So the condition of the big while loop can be only contained with um, one condition. Stack is now empty. That's not right. Another time when the stack is empty is when we pop out the last node, the end of the algorithm. What is the last node we traversed? The last node can be either the rightmost leaf, like node C in this example, or can be the root node, like A in this example, if the root doesn't have any right child. Can the left child be the last node? Nope. Whenever there is a left child, there is a parent. Parent node is always after the left child. Can the last node be a right child in the left subtree? Nope. Because everything in the left subtree is considered a left node to the root. 
So we'll need to deal with them first before the root. So even though it's a right child, this right is relative because um, compared to its parents, it's right, but compared to the root, it's left. Is it possible that by any chance, when the current pointer pointing to now and the stack is empty, but there's still one or two nodes that have never been traversed, is it possible? If this is the case, then the algorithm is incorrect. Because the algorithm thinks if we don't meet both conditions at the same time, it means that we have traversed all the nodes. And then we will go to the next section, which is to return the output. I was a little bit confused about it because it didn't seem that obvious to me. Okay, let's start with a simple tree with three nodes first. According to the algorithm, when the current pointer is now and the stack is empty, there's no more node that we need to traverse. We finish all of them. If it's B, we've known that A is still in the stack now, so the condition is correct. Actually, any node in the left subtree of A will be added to the output before A. So how about C? C is the last node, so the condition is correct too. The current pointer is now and the stack is empty only happens after we traverse C. So it's correct. OK, now let's add some difficulty at one more level. We want to find a counterexample that shows the condition is incomplete. But there's no counterexample in the left half leaves, at least, that shows the condition is incomplete, as I just explained because when the current node is now, A is still in the stack, so the condition works. So how about the right half? If you see C, F, G, this triangle as a whole, it's the same with the triangle A, B, C. So in A, B, C, there's no counterexample to show that the condition is incomplete. Therefore, the current pointer is now and the stack is empty only happens after we traversed G. So it's correct too. Okay, I think I can stop here and let you guys draw a tree with one more level. And you will find the same result. No, it's not a strict proof, but it's a nice way to intuitively understand it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Um, if you like it, feel free to give a like and subscribe. Thank you, guys.